thanks for the time today and cool seeing everyone else's updates this morning. See what's going on in Ross Industrial Consortium. We've enjoyed being a member with you guys for many years and attending a lot of your in-person events as well. Uh, but yeah, we, we had a recent announcement this summer about this development platform that's really extending the functionality that we've had in MoveIt for a long time. So what is MoveIt? I, I, I'm sure everyone in this call knows, but just in case there's some newcomers to the consortium, uh, this is a, one of the original motion planning platforms in ROS, and it excels at controlling robot arms, going from point A to point B around obstacles with collision checking, inverse kinematics. We have a lot of extensions for perception, mobile manipulation. Um, we do a lot of work on Cartesian control, kind of like the work we saw earlier. Um, we, we love uh, Intel Real Senses, so I enjoyed that talk earlier. And we have some libraries on how to do grasping manipulation. Um, and so this is open source. And we've been, as a company at Picnic Robotics, we've been uh, integrating this with a lot of other companies for, for years now. We've been around for uh, seven years. And we've seen a lot of... Um, a lot of similar patterns and we've we've thought to ourselves like how can we better deliver value to our customers and not have to keep reinventing the same uh integrating the same code and pieces and building blocks and over and over again so uh, we wanted to simplify things and move faster so we've developed this thing called move it studio it is more of a premium extension to the open source project uh it, it's primarily a user interface that goes on top that makes move it easier to use so we're, we're taking our best practices and we've we know we brought this product to market and the goal here is that we're going to make uh, it's, it's basically a low code environment, definitely not no code. So you can extend it uh, to your heart's desire. Um, but a lot of the basic things that you can do and move it and for manipulation now kind of come out of the box, the idea. And so we want to make engineering teams at other companies able to do more, um, really not having to hire Picnic to help anymore because we, we have this product. Uh, and so a lot of the, the features here are around debugging motion planning. Uh, building you know more advanced applications so that we're trying to not be a, a teach pendant that you'd see on an industrial arm controller but how do you bring in computer vision uh, and more advanced like dynamic replanning online and and we'll do that while reducing the need for experts um, and so the primary the, the initial thing that we really focus on is this behavior tree integration and that's something that uh, the Ross community is, is wild about the behavior tree got CPP library, for example. There's a number of different uh, solutions on the market. Uh, so Davide, who creates behavior trees, he's actually on the picnic team, and we've been working with him on uh, how to best integrate task planning and motion planning with behavior tree. And so we have a whole interface for that. Uh, and one of the really valuable things about this is um, the fault tolerance side of things. So if the robot uh, needs to error recover or be able to deal with something changing in dynamic environments, we can program those behaviors and kind of you see in the screenshot, but right. Um, and then that task planning is like, not just moving from A to B, but how do I do like five tasks in a row and not get stuck in some joint configuration, singularity, joint limit that it can't uh, solve through. So these are like multi-step tasks. We wanna pick something up, put it over here, open this container. Uh, and, and this is all without waypoints. And then, so part of this uh, Move It Studio is that we have a bunch of behaviors pre-built. So it has this whole library that you can kind of move in this drag and drop environment. Um, and then again, we want to emphasize that we've made it really streamlined to actually extend this with plugins. Um, I want to step back. I actually realized that I, I skipped the thing I wanted to show. Matt, you mentioned in your description of this that just updates from the Move It project. Um, before I keep going too far, we, we have uh, a lot of cool stuff happening in the project uh, on the open source side too. Um, I just want to know an update on the movement side, the open source side is uh, this is our current roadmap of new features going into the movement motion planning library. Uh, the blue lines are particularly the, um, the things that we're really focused on uh, this sprint and this quarter. And so we are working on uh, better path quality, which is a problem that a lot of people reported about these a kind of circuitous motions. So that's being added through a parallel plan feature where we're actually drawing multiple motion plans and then consolidating them. That'll be working out of the box and move it. Um, really, we've put a lot of work into ROS2 parameters because in ROS2, the way they were implemented is, is a little bit uh, clunky. And then uh, better Cartesian interpolation. We've been adding Python bindings to ROS2, multiple ARM support. These are two Google Summer Code projects better camera calibration out of the box, 
as well as a new collision checker that's going to be a lot faster using uh, a, a special version of FCL called HPP uh, FCL. And then admittance control, uh, we've done a lot of work in ROS control recently for um, how to have that, like the presentation we saw earlier, uh, more interactions that are adapted to real, like interacting with, with things that are compliant. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, I realized I forgot. I, I skipped that step. Um, and so, yeah, I'm talking about Studio, though. Uh, this is, again, a level one top I just presented. And um, so this developer platform, we're really targeting it at uh, engineers who maybe they don't necessarily have a PhD and they maybe aren't like the most expert Ross developer who's been at it for 20 years. I don't think anyone's been at it for 20 years, actually. Ross is not 20 years old, but at it for 10 years. Um, and another side or another product that's very related, it's kind of built into the same suite of software uh, we're calling the, the Move It uh, Supervisor. And this one is using the behavior trees that I just showed, but adds uh, a lot of operator in the loop control. So I have a bunch of GIFs of things that we've done with the UR5, um, all using Move It Studio. And you see like there, if you look at some of these GIFs, the user is actually clicking on the screen saying, you know, open this door handle, pick this object, open this cabinet door. Um, and this is all work we've done in collaboration with NASA and more recently Space Force. Um, so in their applications, when you have space robotics, the, you, you actually do want to have someone on Earth controlling these robots remotely. Um, and, but it needs to be mostly autonomous because of the high latency environment of like communication to space. So all this is built on top of Move It Studio's development platform. So behind this, we're running the same behavior trees, the same abstractions of motion planning and task planning, uh, but the user is able to click into it. That's not required. Uh, a lot of the applications we do for terrestrial customers are fully autonomous. And so this supervisor aspect is not needed. However, uh, one area that this is still useful for uh, industrial applications, which I realize I'm talking to an industrial consortium right now, is that this Move It Studio platform totally provides remote monitoring and error recovery. So we can actually uh, remotely connect to your robot. And while you're building out applications in behavior trees, you can actually recover them, reset the stop if your robot hits something unexpected, um, get them back online. Uh, we also use this a ton. Our, our developers love this because a lot of our team is remote. And so we have people working around the country and even in other countries, they're able to control robots in our Boulder, Colorado office. And when they get stuck, we need a more senior engineer to come in. They can use this to remotely see what the robot's doing and help help our developers get it back online. So there's a lot of use cases here. I know it's a little bit complicated, all the things I'm throwing out, but th these are all within the, the Move It Studio uh, feature set. Um, and so the, the last thing I wanted to show actually is a, a live demo. Um, let's see if this is working. So, uh, first this bar at top, I forgot to mention this whole, uh, remote connectivity where we've partnered with Formant robotics for the cloud connection part, which has been a nice partnership because they provide all the like, uh, authentication connectivity fleet management. So we can actually, we have like on our system, like six UR fives connected up and some Canova robots. We've also integrated some other brands of robots and we can actually switch between them in this list here. But right now we're on a production robot and this is an example of the behavior tree. Um, so on the on your robot side, it's running behavior tree at CPP, the open source library, but we've added a much nicer abstraction for how to customize it. So we can uh, add new behaviors or nodes to this and kind of wire it up in, in real time. We can change uh, the values of these blocks. We can open the settings here. And this is presenting both uh, YAML configuration files. We can edit through this as well as uh, what they call ports and behavior trees. So each one of these are communicating with each other through these in and out ports. And so we can create very complex applications that have like fallback features and everything through here. And so we can bring in different types of controls like if then else logic so that a robot can really reason about the world uh, with a developer testing this. And so once we build this, we wanna run it ourselves, we click done and we can immediately without having to uh, recompile, we should be able to run this on a robot and refresh this. I've had this open for a minute. Um, this is web-based, so it uh, doesn't require any installation on your local system that really simplifies whether you're on Ubuntu 2204 or Windows or whatever you, whatever you have. Um, and so here we have a 3D environment. 
we can kind of take some situational awareness. Okay, so we're gonna pick a point cloud in our environment just so we have some collision checking involved. And here we can see the 3D point. And now the demo I like to really give is just like opening a large door. So I can tell it to go to this mock-up door we have over here. And then this, again, this is more of the supervised autonomy. We can go through the open door sequence and we're gonna tell it to lever handle, it's a push door. And we're actually working at, currently on making this all machine learning based and it's gonna be way more automated, but we just give it a little bit of labeling. It's doing some computer vision here. Um, and similar to Arviz, it'll show us a preview of the plan that we're about to do. And we can decide whether that plan looks good or not. So here's like kind of a ghost robot. We see it's gonna move forward. And this is something that like our developers love because they can see if the plan they actually created is gonna work or not, they can tweak it. Uh, and if we like it, we can confirm it. And then again, this is a live demo of a robot uh, over the internet showing, opening a door. So I am actually working from my home office today, but uh, hopefully it works. So that's one thing we running, we had this running in IMTS. We, our booth was next to Matt. So it's good seeing him there last week. And we had this running as well. <coughs> and um, yeah, I, I think that's all I wanted to show there. So back to my presentation. It's pretty much all I had to share. Um, here's some screenshots. Oh, one thing I didn't mention is we sort of emphasize that you can create custom behaviors. And so this is a template editor where you fill in the name of this, basically a plugin. It'll generate the template code in your Colcon workspace, in your code editor. You can open this up in uh, VS Code or whatever you want and add in uh, a custom action that you want it to do within this behavior tree environment. So that's a feature that our engineers love for extending this quickly. Um, and just coming soon, we're working on more tools for understanding trajectories. A lot of customers say to us that uh, when movement fails, it's not clear why the motion planners can't figure it out. Often it's because there's a collision in the way or there's a, a joint limit or there's something going on. We want to present that to the, the user so they can understand if it's their fault, if it's a bug in our software or, or what have you. Uh, and then another thing that we've integrated to some customers, but it's still pretty complicated, is caching where we can create a probabilistic roadmap graph. This is something my PhD was on. So I'm very passionate about this. And we can generate a cache of all the things the robot's probably gonna to have to do in its lifetime so that when you wanna plan, it's able to plan instantaneously. This is a feature set pretty similar to what real-time robotics does, uh, if you know of that company. And then finally, uh, uh, an interface for tuning your trajectory to be more optimal, just so it runs faster. The cycle time is always a big thing that we hear from customers. Uh, and so that's all I wanted to share today. We are going to keep contributing to Move It open source, uh, but we're also excited about launching this new Move It Studio uh, software. Thanks. All right, so we have a couple minutes for questions for Dave about Move It Studio and the Move It roadmap. And there's a lot going on. It looks really neat, and we're excited to see all the interest in behavior trees. I know for you know the run of the mill maybe person who's checking out open source from a factory behavior tree is a little confusing at first, right? But it's a really powerful enabler for richer capability, right? So no, really- good Yeah, to, you know, I, I like that right. point. Be behavior trees, they are definitely more complex than what like a UR teach pendant might present for like moving between waypoints. It's it's more complex than a basic sequencer of waypoints, but for a developer who maybe they're just like, they don't have to be the most experienced or senior developer. I think it's something that they can, they really understand and love. So it's 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 kind of targeting that like uh, average developer, not necessarily like a PhD level. Well, thanks for the time, Ben.